In this video we're going to learn how to calculate daily net radiation from COAGMET weather data. So if you go down to Canvas you can download this spreadsheet called Net Radiation Macros 4 underscore 2016. This is the file that you want to use um, for calculating net radiation. It has a macro built into it that does the calculations for you. There's also a help file on using the macro shown here. It's a special page. So when I downloaded that spreadsheet it looks like this. It looks like it has the COAGMET header information across the top. But it also, if you go over to the developer page and look at Visual Basic, if you want to get into that, you can look at the function. Go here to scoot this over. Go here to Modules, Module 8. And right here you can see the macro which does the net radiation calculation. And this is the formulas recommended by the ASCE uh, standardized reference ET equation. Okay, so you really don't need to do that just to use the spreadsheet. So I'm going to close that. So the first thing we need to do is import the daily weather data that we want to use to work the problem. So I'm going to go back over here to uh, my COAGMET page like you've done in the past. I'm going to work my example for Greeley. Uh, Greeley number four station. And I'm going to use 2014 as my year. I want to start on May 1. And I want to finish the end of September. I want daily data. So I submit that. Hit Control A. Control C to copy. Control V to paste it back up here in this cell. Just like you've done in the past. Go to the data tab. Text to columns. It's uh, delineated data comma separated and hit finish. There we go. You can see our data here is now spread it's throughout the system. It looks like it's formatted correctly. Okay. So at this point we could call the create a new column called our net. This is going to be our net radiation, daily net radiation. And we need to call up the macro to do this calculation. Now I put a little tab here called RN help, which just has some notes on the order of the variable. This is how you call the function in Excel right here, an example. And so you call this net radiation function just like any other function in Excel, like average or sum or max or min. And then you give it a list of variables. And the variables that are going to be required are the day of year, latitude, elevation, albedo, global irradiance, maximum air temperature, minimum air temperature, and vapor pressure. Okay. Now, notice that we do need day of year. Okay. And when you download the data, all you have is the regular date. So we need to convert the... Uh, date into day of year. So I'm going to go back to the data. I'm going to insert a new column here. Go to home, insert, new column, day of year. Now I've given you some notes on how do you convert this date time information into day of year. Okay, and but I put it in the help screen a little uh, copy of the formula right here. If you want to, just go over here and copy this. Go back to data. Paste this in here. And you can see it'll, it gave me my day of year now as 121, which is correct. Now sometimes you'll have to go up here. If this doesn't look correct, 
it's because the format of the cell is improper. Like if it if it is kept it as a date, it'll look like that, and you go, hey, that doesn't look right. So if you see that, just go up here to your number format and change it back to a number, and it should look okay. Then I can click on that, double click on this little square in the lower right hand corner, and it populates my day of year. Okay. So I have now the day of year for the period that I need, and that's going to help me do the net radiation calculation. Going back to the help, we're also going to need the latitude and elevation of the site. Latitude in degrees, elevation in meters. So we need that, I need that, for my Greeley location. Remember, you can always go back to CoAgMet. I'm going to go back over to the CoAgMet homepage. Here's the CoAgMet homepage, and if I scroll up, I can see Station um, Index. This has metadata on all stations in the CoAgMet network. So I'm going to go to Station Index, and here you see all the stations with this information that we need. So I'm going to go to Greeley 4, right there. So we can see that Greeley 4 has a latitude of 40.45 essentially and an elevation of 4,683 feet. I don't want that in feet, I want that in meters. So you'll need to divide that number by 3.28. I have this little console calculator that I use for things like this. So 4,683, of course you could just do it right in Excel if you wanted to. So it's really about 1,428 meters. Sometimes I keep a little scratch pad where I keep track of these numbers. All right, so now we should be ready to go and actually call this uh, function and use it. So you have to remember these order of variables okay uh, to use it so we're gonna day of year latitude elevation albedo that's a constant for us 0.23 then we need the locations of global irradiance max and min temperature and vapor pressure okay so let's just try to do it here so I'm gonna go back out here to the end of my spreadsheet Go back to the data tab. I'm going to pull it over here so it's a little bit easier to work with. So this is where I want to put it in. Actually, you know, it might be a smart move just to go get, I'm going to go actually just grab that help information and paste it into a new text box over on the other screen. That's probably a smarter way to do it. So I'm going to copy that. Go back to the data. And then I can do insert text box. This is sometimes a helpful thing to do. There we go. Now I have the information I need to call the function right there handy. You could always print it out too. That would be a good way to do it. Or if you have a double screen computer, just move it over to the other side. So now I'm ready to call our net. So you'll hit the equal sign, parentheses, whoops, our net, and you should see our net appear there. See how that appeared? In the, in the subscript. And now I'm ready to put in the information. So day of year, that was in column C2, cell C2. The latitude was 40.45. The elevation was 1428. The albedo 
was 0 0.23. That's our standard value for all our ASCE formula. And so now we're ready to actually put in the weather data. The first thing is the global irradiance in megajoules per meter squared per day. So I'm going to scroll over and that appears in column N. So N2. Now I'm ready for maximum air temperature. I scroll over again. Max is in E and min is in G. Okay, E and G. Okay, so E2, comma, G2. And the only thing left is vapor pressure. And that's an I2. That should do it. Okay, and there it did it. It calculated net radiation using the macro. It's 14 megajoules per meter squared per day. Click on it, double click here. Boom, we've got all the net radiation for the year kind of scroll down through there and see what some of the maximum values are. We got some 17s at the maximum. Now we can plot this. So I'm going to go over, you can plot it as against day of year, for example, if you wanted to, or you could plot it against date time. I'm going to pick day of year, hold down the control key, insert, charts. I'll use this one. There you see it. It's got sort of the shape that we're expecting. I'm going to move this over to another sheet called RNet. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Use the quick layout tool add some axes. This is clearly R and net. And this is day of year. Twenty sixteen. That tells the reader that what year it was and what day of year it was. I didn't specify the units, you should always do that. Mega joules per meter squared per day. Here we have the Greeley location. I want to change this format. Of the x-axis goes from about 120 to about 280. Now we're looking better. And um, now we have a pretty nice looking plot. Looking at net radiation here is a function of, of uh, day of year. This data looks a little suspect here. There could be missing or incomplete data somewhere. This one looks awfully odd too. Here, this is day 191. Let's go back and check our raw data to see what was going on there. I'm going to go back over here. Scroll down to 191. Take a look at it. Ah, I already see a problem. See, do you see that? There's missing data on that day. Here's the uh, global irradiance. Remember, that's in column N. It's completely missing. Okay. So what you would do here is use some kind of interpolation method to fill in this missing data. For example, you, a good example is just, since there's only one missing point, I'll just take the average of the day before and the day after. Okay. I could do something like that. A 
comma. It's hard to get to this one. There we go. See, I did that average of N71, N73. It gave me a, a rough approximation of that. And it looks like some other data are missing. Um, maximum and minimum temperature. I'm just going to interpolate between the points again. So that would be about 31.35. There's more sophisticated ways to do this, obviously. Um, but uh, I'm just going to do it this way for now just to get us on down the road. And let's see, um, what about vapor pressure? That was column I. Did Looks like there is a vapor pressure for that day. So now if we go back over and look at our plot, let's see what's going on here. Oh, yep, see it's looking a lot better now. So you would want to, if you see data points that seem like they might be um, uh, erroneous, um, you want to go back and check your raw data. But that's basically how you generate the net radiation data from the macro. And um, from there, then the next step is to use that net radiation data to calculate reference crop evapotranspiration.